Hi, child some artists. I was reading this book to my class the other day. Yeah, I'm still reading them stories online. And it gave me an art and craft idea. So this is If You Give a Moose a Muffin by Laura Joffe Numeroff, illustrated by Felicia Bond. If you give a moose a muffin, He'll want some jam to go with it. So you'll bring out some of your mom's homemade blackberry jam. When he's finished eating his the muffin, he'll want another and another and another. And when they're all gone, He'll ask you to make more. You'll have to go to the store to get some mix. He'll want to come with you. When he opens the door, he'll feel how chilly it is and he'll ask to borrow a sweater. When he puts the sweater on, he'll notice that it's missing a button and he'll ask for a needle and thread. He'll start sewing. The button will remind him of the puppets his grandmother used to make. So he'll ask for some old socks. He will make sock puppets. When they're done, he'll want to put on a puppet show. He will need some cardboard and paints. Then he'll ask you to help him make the set. When the scenery is finished, he'll get behind the couch, but his antlers will stick out. So he'll ask for something to cover them up. You'll bring him the sheet from your bed. When he sees the sheet, he'll remember that he wanted to be a ghost for Halloween. He'll try it on and shout, boo. It will scare him so much that he falls right over the paints. So he'll use the sheet to clean up the paint. Then he'll ask for some soap to wash the sheet. He'll probably want to hang the sheet up to dry. He'll go outside to put it on the clothesline. When he's out in the yard, he'll see your mother's blackberry bushes. Seeing the blackberry bushes will remind him of her jam. I'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if you give him the jam, he'll want a muffin to go with it the end. So what this made me think of was sock puppets. It's been a while since I've made some sock puppets. So things that you might need are socks, clean socks people, and get permission from your parents before you just take socks and start sewing them up. 
Um, this is a good use for those socks you outgrew or that one of them got lost somewhere and you only have one left because matching puppets, they don't have to happen. It could be all mismatched. You can also use old gloves to make them. Some buttons. I have all different sizes of buttons here. Some thread, yarn, embroidery thread, ribbon, whatever you need to use. If you don't have yarn or you don't feel like your sewing skills are up to it, you can hot glue them on. And I've also been known to use a stapler to attach pieces of fabric or cloth to the mitten or sock to make cut out, like cut out circles of felt to make the eyes. Um, if you wanna go full on, they don't have to match. You can do mismatched eyes. You could do shaped eyes. Like sometimes it's fun to give heart eyes to your puppets. Like this. It's hard to pick them up. Heart eyes. If you want to go full on um, Muppet looking, you can use ping pong balls. Now, I just happen to have some ping pong balls hanging around my house, don't you? Uh, you can cut them in half. Grown up help might be necessary. And I poked holes in the side with a needle. And you can sew them on. I only have one on so far. But you can put two on. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. One of the fun things about making your own sock puppets is it's all about imagination. You can make your sock puppet be anything you want. It doesn't have to look like a girl to be a girl. It doesn't have to look like a pig to be a pig. Once you make it start talking, once you make it start telling the story, that story and that character are yours to make happen what you want. So try it out and show us your sock puppets that you've made. Maybe we can have a sock puppet conversation. Show us your art, Chaucer Artists.